The next time you head down to your local river for a swim, or grab your friends and some fishing poles to catch some fish in your local swamp, then know this, there's a lot more to rivers and swamps than meets the eye. Like the ocean, these bodies of water can be a treasure trove of mysteries, while simultaneously being complex, essential ecosystems with so much more. Wait till you see what we've found. From creepy dolls to albino catfish, you have to check it out. 20 Most Terrifying Things Found in Rivers and Swamps <laughs> Unexploded Bomb A large Second World War bomb discovered in an Italian river during a severe drought has been safely diffused, the military has said. Fishermen spotted the device, which weighed 1,000 pounds and contained 530 pounds of explosives, in the dried-up river Po recently. The discovery came after the river's water levels hit a record low following months of low rainfall. The Po, the country's longest river, is experiencing its worst drought in 70 years. Extreme heat and little rainfall has been disastrous for the Po River and its basin, which covers nearly a quarter of Italy's territory and provides about one-third of the country's agricultural production. But this was a lot different kind of crisis. Around 3,000 people who live in the surrounding area had to evacuate their homes before the disposal operation could take place. At first, some of the inhabitants said they would not move. However, the authorities succeeded in persuading them to leave so that the bomb could be transferred to a nearby quarry to be detonated. They were allowed to return to their homes after engineers had completed the operation. Before the bomb was destroyed, a stretch of the river and the area's airspace were closed. A local railway line and a nearby road were also shut down temporarily. Bombs away! The controlled explosion happened in a quarry 30 miles from where it was found. What scientists just found in a river terrifies the whole world. It's safe to say they're not giant potatoes, despite looking just like that. But what exactly these two oval objects are is a complete mystery. Maybe they're slabs of bog butter. Ever heard of it? The bog butter is an ancient waxy substance found buried in peat bogs, particularly in Ireland and Scotland. Likely an old method of making and preserving butter. Some tested lumps of bog butter were made of dairy, while others were meat-based. But if this discovery is, in fact, bog butter, the scientists would have no reason to be concerned. There's a theory that these two objects could be egg sacs, and something unknown could be slowly developing inside them. Like the alien movie franchise showed us, the egg sacs eventually broke to reveal a terrifying face hugger that would attack people and impregnate their hosts through their mouths. Not long after, a chest buster alien would break out of its host's body and eventually grow to wreak havoc on humanity. Roll credits. So if these giant potato looking objects are the egg sacs from some alien monster, these scientists better run. If this discovery is anything like the Alien movies, this will not end well. Don't you think? Comment below with your opinions. Hashtag open discussion. Spotless Crake Preferring to run and hide, these little birds are often thought of as flightless. However, they can be quite competent flyers. Based in New Zealand's freshwater wetlands, they are even strong swimmers despite not having webbed feet. However, this bird is very secretive and infrequently seen. However, their conspicuous trilling calls ring out in spring and summer. They are heard more often than seen. Several different calls are given, including bubbling sounds, a short pit-pit, a repeated mook, and the loudest call, a long trilling purr. In New Zealand, the spotless crake, also known as puito, is distributed throughout the mainland. Numbers are few in the South Island, with only a handful of isolated communities in the West Coast, East Coast, and Southland of New Zealand. The distribution in the North Island is spread far wider, but there are still few communities. Most sightings of spotless crake tend to be near the top of the North Island, because the spotless crake is rarely seen. It's hard to determine what the population size is. So, currently population numbers are unknown. These unique birds have a broad, omnivorous diet, feeding on seeds, fruit, leaves of aquatic plants, and a wide variety of invertebrates, including worms, snails, spiders, beetles, and other insects. Swamp Lantern Yellow Skunk Cabbage, as it's most commonly known, is a large, vibrant plant found in swamps and wet woods, along streams, and in other wet areas of the Pacific Northwest of America. 
It begins the season with an unusual flower and continues through the summer as a rosette of monstrous paddle-shaped, tropical-looking glossy leaves, which rise to five feet or more. A spike of minute flowers surrounded by a large, conspicuous yellow or cream bract open on one side, grows on a stout stalk in a cluster of giant leaves. The flower is a club of greenish-yellow flores, surrounded by a large yellow spathe up to eight inches long. The short, fleshy, underground stem is eaten by animals. Baked, it supplemented the winter diets of foraging communities. Fun fact, the peppery sap was once used medicinally. The common name refers to the skunk-like odor of the sap and the odor of the flowers. No other plant matches the swamp lantern. The leaves are something else. It takes only weeks before the bright yellow flower parts are overshadowed by enormous, brilliant green leaves. It may be that their habitat plays a role, for it's typically dank and dark where they grow. There's something otherworldly as they rise like luminous golden flames from the dark swamp mud. Creepy Doll While under random creepy stuff, 21 dolls on bamboo stakes have been mysteriously found in an Alabama swamp. Sheriff's deputies traveled by canoe into Bear Creek Swamp recently to recover the dolls, whose faces and hair were painted white. Authorities just thought they were a Halloween prank and really didn't give it much thought. But they decided to investigate after people expressed concerns on social media. Countless movies and TV shows have capitalized on a similar premise, dolls being creepy. The more human they look, with moving glass eyes, realistic hair, or a slight blush on the cheek, the more they weird us out. The local press reports that it has been a rite of passage for generations of teenagers to enter the area at night looking for a good time, even though there are urban legends that creatures are said to roam the swamp. Bear Creek Swamp is a massive bog with a bit of a reputation locally, and it's not unusual to hear reports of loud booms coming from its depths. So what's a few creepy dolls? It only adds to the area's creepy factor. The dolls were atop bamboo stakes and had been placed in the swamp close to the dirt road that travels through the wetland. So, whoever placed them there probably knew people would see them. Sturgeon. Talk about river monster. Fishing for Idaho's white sturgeon is allowed strictly on a catch and release basis, and they may not be removed from the water while handling. But when you catch a record-breaking sturgeon, you're gonna wanna show it off a bit. For example, a couple from Eagle Mountain, Utah traveled to Idaho, hoping to tangle with North America's largest freshwater fish the white sturgeon. While fishing on the CJ Strike Reservoir, they hooked into a big one, ultimately landing the 10-foot, 4-inch monster sturgeon and setting the hook on a new catch and release state record in the process. One of the hundreds of fish collected during surveys around CJ Strike Reservoir, only a handful of sturgeon of this size have been seen. Biologists captured a 131.5-inch behemoth in 1993 as well as a 119-inch fish in 2015, downstream where biologists have handled more than 4,000 sturgeon during surveys over the last 30 years. Only 10 fish have ever exceeded the 10-foot mark, so yes, they do exist, but these are very rare and special fish. Sturgeons ranging from 7 to 12 feet in length are common, and some species grow up to 18 feet. These prehistoric-looking fish mostly live in large freshwater lakes and rivers, but some species also travel to the ocean and return to rivers and lakes to breed. Red Swamp Crayfish, Procambaris clarki. Although crayfish inhabit many regions of the Earth, members of this crayfish species are located in North America, mostly found south-central United States and northeastern Mexico, areas to which this species is native. The red swamp crayfish has also been transplanted to Hawaii, Japan, and even the Nile River. However, they are often an invasive pest. Red swamp crayfish are omnivorous, feeding on aquatic plants, snails, insects, fish, and amphibian eggs and the young. They have been found to reduce amphibian populations through direct predation and competition for habitat. Populations have also led to declines in native crayfish species for the same reasons. Like other crayfish, they are considered an ecosystem engineer capable of impacting ecosystem processes with the potential to affect all species in the area. That's why they are considered problematic too. However, red swamp crayfish are commonly raised for human consumption and have been reportedly used as bait by anglers. Plus, sometimes sold as freshwater lobster, they are kept as aquarium pets due to their deep red color. The behavior most characteristic of the red swamp crayfish is burrowing. Crayfish burrow to find moisture, food, warmth, and just to pass the time. Goonch Catfish 
Check out this species of monster-sized catfish found in some mountainous regions in India, Nepal, and other adjacent locations. Known in many other names like giant devil catfish, giant painted catfish, killer catfish, and sand shark, this large toothy fish has been nicknamed as the river monster for its enormous size and aggressive tendencies. Very little is known about the behavior of this huge fish in the wild. They're not only voracious eaters, but also very strong and agile swimmers despite their large size. Many people who have tried catching them while out for a fishing trip have reported that they are experts at locking themselves in their position in such a way that it's actually difficult to move them from the riverbed once they're hooked. But these monster fish are best just left alone. The Goonch is believed to have been feeding on corpses thrown into local rivers after funeral ceremonies. So this fish is believed to be targeting swimmers after developing a taste for human flesh. Recently, an 18-year-old Nepalese man disappeared in the river, dragged down by something. Locals have believed for years that a mysterious monster lurks in the water. But now they think it's the mighty Goonch that has moved on from scavenging to attacking swimmers, venturing into the river along the Indian-Nepal border. A huge crocodile. A monster 15.5 foot saltwater crocodile, the biggest ever found in Australia's Catherine River systems, was finally captured recently after a decade long hunt. Rangers caught the record size Salty just downstream from a local township. So rangers removed the 1300 pound croc from a trap at a private property at Taylor's Park. They were surprised because it's unusual to find a croc this size in that area. He's the biggest crocodile the wildlife operations team has ever caught in the Catherine River, being one of the deadliest animals in the country and the largest living crocodilian in the world. It isn't hard to see why this scaly dinosaur brings out fear in everyone. Although they spend the majority of their time in freshwater rivers and swamps, they move to the estuaries and occasionally the open sea during the dry season. In living in murky waters, it's often hard to see them approach until it's too late. In saying this, they are quite capable of propelling their body in the air by leaping out of the water, and the deeper the water, the more momentum they gain. Throughout the last century, saltwater crocodiles were hunted almost to the point of extinction. However, in 1971, they became a protected species. It's now believed that there are around 150,000 salties roaming Australia. Lost Fuselage Disaster as you can see, three Boeing 737 fuselages tumbled down the steep bank and into the river. The components were en route to Boeing's Washington State Headquarters on a train for final assembly after being manufactured in Kansas. So how did they end up in the Kark Fork River in Montana? A total of 19 cars in the 90-car train derailed in the incident about 18 miles east of Superior, Montana. Of the derailed cars, three cars carrying these 737 plane fuselages went down the embankment. The cause of the derailment was not yet known, said a Montana Rail Link spokesman, but added that speed was not considered to be an issue. There is a 35 mile per hour speed limit on that section of the track, which is curvy as it tracks the Clark Fork. Fortunately, there were no injuries in the accident. Boeing said it had experts at the scene soon after to begin a thorough assessment of the situation. Montana Rail Link had called in three contractors to undertake the recovery of the derailed cars. What a job! It's no easy task hauling objects the size out of a deep embankment. It's not known if the incident would affect the production of planes, the company said. Boeing's production depends on a complex supply chain that delivers many parts just in time for assembly. Obviously, this is a major delay. B-17 Flying Fortress Swamp Ghost Papua New Guinea has seen its share of plane crashes, as well as its share of war buffs hunting for wrecks. But of all the downed planes scattered throughout the mountainous rainforest and jungle terrain, the fabled Swamp Ghost remains the most legendary. For 64 years, this downed bomber rested intact among the waist-high water and swamp grass. It has slipped out of thought until 1972, when Australia soldiers spotted it completely preserved, it was like a ghost in the swamp. The Swamp Ghost was the nickname given to this World War II B-17E bomber wreck, located inland of Dyke Ackland Bay. The wreck rested approximately halfway along the commercial flight path and ditched in the swamp during the Second World War, after an attack on ships in Japanese-occupied New Britain on February 23, 1942. 
While flying over, this plane was intercepted and eventually, having run out of fuel, had to force land in the remote swamp near the north coast of New Guinea. Incredibly, all of the crew survived the crash landing and arduous trek out. Over time, trekkers started visiting the aircraft, stripping the B-17 of its instruments, guns, and even flight yokes. Then in 2016, an American salvager took the bomber apart and removed it from the swamp. Snapping Turtle Found in Swamp in some parts of the United States, it's easy to take the snapping turtle for granted, because they are so common. A lot of people consider them a nuisance, as they can play havoc with waterfowl. Others, however, like to hunt these turtles. The aptly named common snapping turtle has a wide range and can be found in southern Canada, northern Mexico, and west out to the Rocky Mountains. It's thought that snapping turtles survived the eruption of at least one supervolcano, so their ability to adapt to changing conditions is not without precedent. And they have a reputation. Throughout much of the South, you'll hear the saying, meaner than a snapping turtle. These turtles are notoriously vicious. The snapping turtle is noted for its combative disposition when out of the water with its powerful beak-like jaws and highly mobile head and neck. In their environment, they are at the top of the food chain. However, when they encounter a species unfamiliar to them, such as humans, in rare instances, they will become curious and survey the situation, and even more rarely may bump their nose on the leg of the person standing in the water. However, when a swimmer approaches, they will slip quietly away from any disturbance, or may seek shelter under mud or grass nearby. Anaconda Snake a giant 23-foot-long anaconda suddenly appeared in front of a professional diver swimming with a camera in a river in Brazil. The diver was shooting the video in Brazil's Formosa River, famous for snakes. The rivers and the bodies of water around this area are the only places in South America where anacondas can be found in crystal clear waters, and therefore diving with them is possible. As shown in the footage, the anaconda swims calmly and peacefully, completely indifferent to their presence. Sometimes, as she comes closer, curious about the camera, and even licks the lens. The behavior of the anaconda debunks the myth that it is an aggressive and violent creature that can endanger people's lives. Anacondas are a large group of snakes found in and around the Amazon rainforest in South America. Specifically, there are four species of anaconda, the green anaconda, the yellow anaconda, the dark spotted anaconda, and the Bolivian anaconda. They are all members of the boa species. The most common breed of anaconda is also the largest, the green anaconda, which has also been nicknamed the common anaconda and the giant anaconda. It's important to not confuse this reptile's nickname with the giant anaconda being discussed here. Anacondas are semi-aquatic snakes, meaning they exist on land but also excel at swimming in the rapid waters of the Amazon. Japanese Salamander a Japanese high school student got the shock of his life after stumbling across a rare, giant salamander on his morning commute. He was walking along the banks of the Kamo River in Kyoto when he spotted the huge, amphibious creature strolling along. Cell phone footage captured shows the slimy-looking animal slithering slowly on all fours, with its long tail dragging behind. After shooting the video, he went to a nearby police station and had them take over as he was worried about running late for school. After the police arrived, the lizard-like amphibian slowly returned to the river. These rather strange but quite unique creatures are an endemic species of Japan that are both protected under Japanese federal legislation and formally nominated as a special natural monument because of their cultural and educational significance. They have quite an amazing ability to burrow down into the rocks of the riverbeds. When aggravated or stressed, they secrete sticky white mucus that may be toxic to predators. The sticky secretion has a pungent odor and smells like Japanese peppers. This has given them a common name in Japan that translates to big pepper fish. Not only that, salamanders have amazing regenerative capabilities and are able to regrow skin and bone if necessary. Smallest fish found in swamp. Pytocypris. Much less than an inch long, the Pytocypris is the smallest species of fish on the planet. It's found nowhere else in the world. Native to Indonesia, this fish habitat streams and swamps and their minuscule size helps them survive in small puddles during drier times of the year. The swamps they inhabit were long thought of as lifeless and inactive, but many species are found only in this area. There is still much to learn about them, and being so small takes extra effort to study and understand. 
But we know this much so far. They are the smallest known fish and the smallest known vertebrates in the world, found living in wetlands on the Indonesian island of Sumatra and in the Malaysian part of Borneo. Members of this genus are habitat specialists that only live in acidic water. Within peat swamp forests, they are usually found to inhabit deeper, cooler water layers close to the bottom half of the water columns. They also tend to inhabit shared areas in which light is usually absent from their environment. These tiny fish, a distant cousin of the carp, is thin, transparent, and the size of a large mosquito when fully grown. Their small size helps them to survive droughts, as they can live in small remaining puddles. However, their small specialized habitat makes them extremely vulnerable to habitat loss. Babirusa They have been called a wild pig with a dental problem, because babirusa have remarkable tusks or canine teeth that can grow right up through the skin in their snout and curve back toward their forehead. The word babirusa means pig deer in the Malay language, as their wild growing tusks are reminiscent of deer antlers. Like many pigs, the male babirusa's canine teeth will continue to grow throughout its entire life, as long as there is blood supply. A lot like our fingernails or our hair, the lower canine teeth are long and overlap the edge of the babirusa's snout as they grow. But it's the upper canines that are truly distinctive. These teeth start out growing downward, but then curve back around and begin to grow up and into the top of the snout. If they are not worn down or broken off during fights with other males, they will penetrate the skin and begin curving back toward the animal's forehead. The tusks can reach up to 12 inches long and can actually grow all the way back into their skull. Ouch! What are those tusks for? The real reason remains a mystery. An early hypothesis was that males use their tusks during fights over females, or perhaps the tusks serve as protection of the face and eyes from these slashing lower tusks during an altercation. Oldest tree, wired to survive in dry, wet, or even swampy soil conditions. Bald cypresses are hardy, tough, and adaptable. In fact, the bald cypress is the oldest known living tree species in eastern North America and the oldest known wetland species of tree in the world. Like rhino populations decimated out of a desire for their horns, humans have ruthlessly hunted almost all of the otherwise resilient bald cypress trees for their timber. However, many bald cypresses 1,000 or more years old along southeastern North Carolina's Black River, a tributary of the Cape Fear River, have managed to escape this fate. Experts have now reported their discovery of the oldest known tree among those at the Black River. The tree is at least 2,624 years old, according to their analysis, which included tree ring chronology and radiocarbon dating of non-destructive core samples. Besides the science involved in dating them, ancient trees are a valuable resource in studying climate change. Their rings provide a chronological roadmap to help reconstruct extended periods of flooding and drought. Environmental experts don't have many spots where they can sample tree rings to pick up variations over 2,000 years of climate. So, where they can, scientists try to take advantage of a goldmine of climate information. Albino Catfish A 15-year-old managed to catch a rare albino blue catfish during an excursion in the Tennessee River recently. Edward was on a fishing trip with his dad, captained by the owner and guide of a fishing charter business when he caught the rare fish. The captain said afterward, I have been seriously catfishing for 30 years. I have been a professional catfish guide for 17 years and have seen literally tens of thousands of catfish landed in my boat. This is the first white catfish I have ever personally seen caught. But the truth is, this fish was not a true albino. Leucism is a condition affecting various animals characterized by an overall pale color, or areas of reduced coloring. Leucism is very similar to albinism, except with leucism, the coloration of the eyes is not impacted. Edward, his father, and the captain were floating on the headwaters of Nickajack Reservoir when they caught the albino catfish. They estimated it weighed around 6 to 8 pounds and took the teen angler about 4 to 5 minutes to get into the boat, saying, to finally personally see such a rare catfish caught was extremely exciting. We were shocked when we saw it. Of course, we saw it before we actually landed it, so it was some very tense and nervous minutes until we got it into the net. Edward ended up releasing the rare catfish. Swamp Sinkhole What was the Bayou Corn Sinkhole Disaster? Louisiana has been beset by high-profile environmental disasters caused by a weakly regulated energy industry. 
One of the most devastating occurred in 2012 at a place called Bayou Corn in Assumption Parish. There, a drilling company accidentally caused the collapse of a massive cave over 5,000 feet below the bayou in the course of drilling, or concentrated salt. The cave's destruction sucked in massive amounts of water, opening up a 37-acre sinkhole that destroyed trees, boats, and homes. The industrial catastrophe disrupted the geology of the local area, to such an extent that small earthquakes and other seismic events rocked the community for months after the cave collapse. It caused oil and methane gas from the underground to rise, appearing as visible bubbles on the surface of the water. Residents reported seeing methane gas bubbles appear in puddles for weeks after the incident. The result was a yawning, bubbling sinkhole that destroyed trees, boats, and homes. Eventually, authorities had no choice but to issue an evacuation order. Despite the obvious negligence, incompetence, and irresponsibility of the drilling company, people pointed to the government as the culprit. In reality, the Bayou Corn sinkhole disaster was a result of under-regulation, and locals wanted the government to take responsibility. 50-pound bone. Divers in Florida made a monster find recently, a four-foot mammoth leg bone. The divers found the 50-pound bone in the Peace River near Acadia, Florida. The new bone is a mammoth femur or thigh bone. The animal it belonged to could have grown up to 14 feet tall and could have weighed up to 22,000 pounds. Its age is unclear, but Colombian mammoths roamed as far south as Costa Rica during the last ice age. In 2011, scientists confirmed that fossils found in the southeast of Florida were mammoth bones from about 13,000 years ago. The Colombian mammoth was probably a hybrid between the woolly mammoth and an unknown lineage of mammoths that arrived in North America from Siberia around 1.5 million years ago, according to recent DNA research. The two friends dive regularly in southwest Florida, and they have previously found mammoth teeth in the river. The same day they discovered the leg bone, they also found several small fossils from extinct sharks and the tooth of a saber-toothed cat, they told the news station. The new mammoth bone was buried in a layer of sand. The amateur archaeologists have donated several finds to the Florida Museum of Natural History. One diver is keeping the bone in the middle school classroom, where he teaches in order to engage his kids in ancient history of Florida. River Cave Take a deep breath, because things are about to get epic. The Bang Phi River Cave in central Laos is considered to be one of the largest known river caves in the world. Find the upriver entrance, which is a forest-covered sinkhole, mind you, and you'll journey on an underground river about 4 miles long, snaking through cave passages that can be more than 390 feet tall and over 650 feet wide. The caverns are filled with hanging stalagmites, subterranean gardens, fossil passages, and foot-long cave pearls made from minerals. Named after the Bangfi River, the cave is the resurgence of the river and is located near the small village of Ban Nong Ping. The cave is not developed, and there are no trails and no electric lights. It's quite famous in the caving community for containing the longest rimstone dam in the world. Incredibly, tourists only started accessing Xibang Fei just over a decade ago, and visitors can bring their own inflatable kayaks for exploring or rent a boat from a local. The river passage is quite spacious and has dimensions comparable to the largest caves in the world. Plus, this cave is only 30 minutes walk from the closest village, but it can be dangerous to explore. The river cave tours are not available between June and October, due to heavy rains causing dangerous floods. If you're like us, then we already know that you'll never look at rivers and swamps the same way again. Who knew they could be gold mines of wonder and discovery and weirdness? So, like and subscribe, there's more of that coming right up.